Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at To The Moon. Let's talk a little bit about the backstory of this game uh, before we actually get into it, what makes it one of my favorite games that I've played so far this year. So this actually came out last year, but it didn't come out on Steam. Basically what it is, is it's kind of like a graphic narrative or an interactive narrative, kind of in the same style, and I hesitate to say this because I know a lot of people are just going to be like, yuck, but similar in the same sense as maybe even something like Magical Diary uh, Horse Hall. I know that's a silly comparison, uh, but the difference is, whereas Magical Diary Horse Hall, uh, you know, cut itself up and, like, really ended up suffering because it just deal dealt with the tedium of everyday life, To the Moon is actually an incredible story, incredibly well told, and very, very touching as well. Now, before we get started, I should mention this is now out on Steam, it's ten bucks. This is not a game as games traditionally are. There's not a whole lot of quote-unquote gameplay here. Basically what you are doing is just progressing the narrative, and I think it's absolutely worth it. Uh, but keep in mind that you are, in, to a certain extent, sort of buying a movie here. What? There was one more thing I wanted to mention. Oh, I, I apologize again, the resolution is going to be a little bit wonky. This is actually a game that was made in RPG Maker, uh, and those don't usually record very well with Fraps, so I've had to switch to the windowed version, which is like 640 by 480 and I'm now recording this in Camtasia. So it's not my normal recording setup, but it will do for this. So we can begin or load game. I'm actually going to load in. Uh, to a file. It's about 41 minutes in. So you can see I've got a, a save down here with about 3 hours, 42 minutes. That's a good indicator of the length of the game, because yesterday, as soon as I started playing this, I actually just did not put it down. I played it 4 hours straight, roughly, uh, right from beginning to end. That's how much I recommend it. The only other game I've done that with recently is Shank. So let's talk about what we've got going on in the game here. Uh, basically, we are playing as these two characters right here, and it's worth noting that we should discuss the actual premise of the game. So we are doctors, and we work at this special, like, sci-fi institute that has developed a machine, and now it can grant dying clients one last wish. So basically what we've done is we've uh, met up with our client named Johnny, who lives in this house down here, uh, and we have to fulfill his wish, which is to actually get him to go to the moon. And the way that we do this is actually really interesting, but kind of like Eternal Sunshine style, put on these helmets and go inside of his memory, and we start from when, like, his most recent memory was, which is just, like, him as an old man sitting out here looking at this lighthouse. And then gradually we, like, link memories together and move back through, like, his middle age, childhood, and eventually, like, when he's very young, our goal is to actually influence him to go to the moon by kind of, like, trying to almost incept an idea in his head to, like, become an astronaut and go to NASA. Or NASA. I always get confused with that, because there's, like, the trailer park boys, NASA, anyway, it's not important right now. Basically... We're in this dude's memory, we're trying to, you know, get back to when he's a kid and convince him to become uh, an astronaut. So we are playing as these two doctors here, and we move around in, like, traditional RPG style. This is fairly early on in the game, less than a quarter of the way through for sure, so we're still in, like, Johnny's middle agedness I would say. Not Johnny from the room, mind you, Johnny from the game. Alright, so we move around here, you can use your mouse. I'm hoping that my mouse pointer doesn't appear on the screen right now, but uh, I'm just moving around with the keyboard and using the spacebar to interact, and that is basically all you are going to do for the entirety of the game. A lot of this stuff kind of plays itself, you're just kind of there as a vessel, sometimes. There is a little gameplay, which I'll show off once the dialogue is done here. So we're going to get a little dialogue between Isabel, who is kind of like a family friend, and Johnny here. Basically, the, the pretense for this because I, I don't want to spoil anything, but I also don't want you to be totally confused by this dialogue that's going to happen, and I'm probably going to shut up while it goes on so I can pay attention to it as well. But basically, the, the saga of To the Moon is the story of Johnny and his wife, River, who has some peculiar behavioral traits, shall we say, and, you know, the, the tragedy and also uplifting events that happen to them throughout their lives, uh, as they're sort of revealed to you memento style in, like, reverse order. So as you can see, River is ill. It's weird because, <clears throat> on the outset, this might actually seem like a spoiler, but this is something that we know very, very early on in the game, and it's got kind of that weird, again, Memento or Eternal Sunshine style thing where the spoilers are actually what comes at the earliest part, like the, the latest part of the game, but the earliest part of Johnny's life, if that makes any sense at all. By the way, this is set in the near to slightly distant future. 
Like, when you go back to Johnny's childhood memories, he talks about, like, oh, yeah, when I was a kid, like, I really loved the Animorphs book series. So that would put him, you know, maybe, you know, only 90s kids are going to get this. I hate myself for making that reference, by the way. So basically, as you can tell here, if you're not, you know, reading this as quickly as I am skipping through the dialogue, basically, Johnny's wife River has been diagnosed with some nameless, traumatic, possibly terminal illness, definitely very serious illness, uh, if nothing else. But they're also in the middle of building their dream house here, so with their medical bills, which, you know, is something that I'm not necessarily uh, knowledgeable about, considering that I live in Canada, uh, they are not going to be able to complete their dream house and pay for her treatment as well. So... Uh, he is struggling with the moral decision of whether or not to tell her that they have enough money or to basically force her to choose between her own treatment and finishing the dream house that he is essentially building for her. And those of you who have played the start of the game already know where this goes. So after this, uh, we should be able to actually experience some of the gameplay of To the Moon. And I use that, I, I kind of like did a little hand motion when I said that. Because there's not a lot of traditional gameplay going on here. There's a little bit of puzzling. Uh, there's a little bit of kind of like fetch questing, but not really. So if you see, look at the bottom of our screen right now. Basically we have five colored orbs. And in order to link this memory to the memory that precedes it, so to like move backwards in Johnny's memory, we have to find five objects of those colors to actually like fill that bar and then we can get back. So it's kind of like an arbitrary game mechanic, but it does allow like a vessel for you to progress the story if that makes any sense. So what we are going to try to do uh, is find like a blue, green, yellow, red, and purple item. Now sometimes you don't find these items, sometimes it just happens naturally uh, from like you moving around and like exploring and getting new dialogue and stuff. So, so we'll start with the jar of pickle pickled olives which will probably give us the green. Oh no, this is actually our memento. So we use the memento to actually, once we collect the five uh, orbs, then we come back here and, and break the uh, object. As you can see right here, because we have the red orb now, we can throw the red orb at it and crack it a little bit. And we are just going to look for other stuff. You never know, we got blue uh, apparently from one, like, one of the flowers under here or something. Still looking for purple, yellow, and green. Oh, I'm sort of trapped in here. So basically, this is the the structure of To the Moon. You'll get a lot of a lot of dialogue and a lot of like story stuff advancing, uh, and then after that, you'll have the chance to do like a little bit of exploration in the area where you'll get more dialogue and you know more information on what's going on. There is our yellow, as you can see. Memory links may also be acquired from exploration, not always from just finding the the color objects that you find uh, in the environment. So this is the house that may or may not eventually be complete, but we are going to exit out here. We still need green, and we still need. Purple. Now, there's like purple flowers around here. I'll admit that I've struggled a little bit with, with some of these. But this is a video that is very hard for me to make because, honestly, the, the strength of To the Moon is not its gameplay. The gameplay is just sort of there to kind of almost make it a game. Like, break it up so that it's not... Oh, there we go. We got our last two. Uh, break it up so that it's not uh, merely like a, a narrative, like, I don't know, a, a direct to steam movie or something. Uh... So the, the gameplay is not necessarily the game's strong suit, not that it's particularly frustrating or anything like that. Uh, but the strong suit is definitely the narrative. This is an incredibly touching, uh, incredibly interesting, and very, very well told story. But I will show you the other elements of the gameplay now, because we have actually uh, obtained all five of our color objects. Usually it does not take very much time, as you can see. And by doing this, we have kind of activated the memory. So, or the memento, I should say. So now we can prepare it. And this is the other aspect of the game. All of the puzzles in the game are exactly like this. So what this is, is basically just like a simple puzzle where what we have to do is uncover all of these tiles. So you can see like these four here in this tetranomino are uh, covered and these four here are covered as well. So by flipping these, we have to create a situation where uh, we can uncover them all. And at first, this was pretty difficult for me, but eventually you just sort of figure out the, the technique that you want to use. So I think maybe we want to do like this, and then like this, 
And then I'm a little bit confused. I think maybe we want to go like this, this, and then the diagonal. Usually you want to finish on a diagonal like that. You can see the ideal over here if you looked quickly on the right side. Uh, it was actually three moves. It took me seven moves, whatever. I mean, after a while, you just sort of get a feel for how the puzzles work and, and you can figure them out. Like, the first one probably took me like 80 moves. Uh, but then after that, they get more difficult, but once you have kind of the, the pattern in your mind, uh, it's easier to figure out. So we'll receive a note here, and we should also be able to activate this memento. The memento is just something that links the, like, earlier memory to the later memory so that we can travel between, if that makes any sense at all. And then we travel backwards into, like, another scene here. Uh, where it's basically going to be us and Isabel and her husband Nick, as well as, uh, I think this might be the only the second or third time that we've seen Johnny's wife, River. But anyway, this is just like, I just wanted to show off a little bit of To The Moon. I really don't think the video is going to go anywhere if I just continue doing this for like another 15 minutes or so. All I'm going to do is absolutely spoil this. So maybe just consider this kind of like a let's look at mini um, and consider this like my almost video review of To The Moon. This is a game where if you are into the idea of, you know, playing a game that's entirely focused on just making a good story. This, they weren't necessarily focused on making a great game, they were focused entirely on making a good story. And this is a great, like, nice three to four hour package, and it's got a very touching story that, I, I will admit, has the potential to make you cry. I'm not saying I cried, because I'm a, a big, strong, manly man, but I am saying uh, very, very well told, very... I, I don't know. I, I do get a very strong Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind from this as well. And the music, fantastically done and very well integrated into the plot. So, you know, maybe not the standard traditional let's look at. However, consider this my glowing recommendation to check out To The Moon if you missed it last year. It is out on Steam. Uh, I believe it is $10, and, you know, that might seem a little expensive for, you know, four hours of, three hours or four hours of play. Uh, that is basically just a story. I encourage you, look past that. Pick it up if this looks at all interesting to you. I promise you that you will not be, uh, you will not feel like you've made, uh, you'll not feel buyer's remorse, let's put it that way. It's a roundabout way of saying it. But in any case, to the moon, two thumbs up from Northern Lion. As always, thank you guys for watching this kind of truncated video, and I will see you guys next time.